Hello and welcome to Bourneville Parish Church for this morning worship. I'm Canon Peter Babington, I'm the Vicar of Bourneville and I'm very grateful to everyone who's contributed to this service. Thank you for joining us today. I'm delighted to be able to tell you that our church will be open for personal prayer from this week. We're going to open on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. And you will be most welcome to come and visit the church to enjoy the peace and beauty of this place as you pray. We're not yet going to be able to open for public worship. Uh, the earliest that will happen is the 4th of July and we're working out and awaiting guidance on how we will do that. But we will keep you informed as and when we know what we can do. But we just want to assure you that we will continue doing these online services um, for the immediate future because we know that there are many people who are enjoying being able to worship with us in this way and who won't be able to uh, come out um, to church services just yet. And we know that the spaces, the number of people that we're going to be able to involve in those services is going to be limited. So we're going to keep on with these online uh, services and we hope you'll enjoy worshipping with us in this way today and in the months to come. The words you need to join in with today's service for these Sundays after Trinity are available on the bourneville-parish-church.org.uk website under special events and the words of the hymns will appear on the screen. Please do join in with as much as you feel able to. And we turn now to the words of preparation. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help, and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. I am giving you worship with all my life. I am giving you obedience with all my power. I am giving you praise with all my strength. I am giving you honour with all my speech. I am giving you love with all my heart. I am giving you affection with all my sense. I am giving you my being with all my mind. I am giving you my soul, O most high and holy God. Praise to the Father, praise to the Son, praise to the Spirit, the three in one. Our first hymn today is All People That On Earth Do Dwell.
the night has passed and the day lies open before us, let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We listen to our readings from Scripture. Psalm 100. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, it is he that has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name, for the Lord is gracious. His steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We turn now to the responsory. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. You have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth and Christ shall give you light. When Christ, our life, appears, you will appear with him in glory. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Today's Gospel speaks to me about healing and mission. Healing and mission are not just the ministry of God, but a shared ministry, a ministry all followers of Jesus are sent out to take part in, and to do so in the authority of God. At the beginning of the passage we heard from Matthew's Gospel, we are given the image 
of the ministry of Jesus. Jesus proclaiming the good news of God's kingdom on earth, healing people in cities and villages on his way. Jesus finds that the places he's visiting are so desperate for healing and transformation that his ministry needs to be shared out. That for the sake of the kingdom on earth, his ministry needs to become the ministry of his followers. So this is what Jesus does. Jesus gathers them and shares with them his same authority in healing and mission. And then in this authority, Jesus sends them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. If this wasn't shocking enough, Jesus does not just send them anywhere, but specifically sends them to the lost sheep of Israel. Jesus sends them to the people on the edges of society, to the most broken places amongst them. Imagine for a moment what this might have felt like for the disciples. They knew that they could no longer hide behind the teachings, the words and actions of Jesus. Now they had to go and proclaim the gospel themselves. Now they had to go and live out the nearness of the kingdom of heaven. Their comfort zones, their own prejudices were about to be confronted. In our time, this sending to the most broken places in our society is equally challenging. We are not just living during a pandemic, but the brokenness of our society and of our world and its unjust structures are being exposed in ways that make us feel uncomfortable, challenged and angry. For me, it feels like every issue we face is a political one. The world of politics is being broadcast directly into our homes on a daily basis. We all have an opinion on matters of local, national and international systems where divisions between groups of people and communities are highlighted. Equality inequalities where we are exposed to the increased use of food banks. A technology of, of poverty where we see children doing schoolwork on shared mobile phones. We have an increased awareness into pensioner poverty and of course the issue of systematic racism that is embedded within our society. Go to the lost sheep, to the parts of our society where healing and transformation are most needed is where Jesus sends his followers. For me, this means that injustices and divisions amongst people are social, political and theological issues. Areas of our lives that are crying out for the inbreaking of the kingdom of God, for healing and transformation is the business is the mission of the church. To do this is to live out the gospel. And we do this not for only for the sake of others, but for our own sake too. We are each created and loved deeply by God. A connection that binds us all together. A connection where we should celebrate and seek the flourishing of all people, regardless of class, gender, sexuality, faith or skin colour. 
to deny the full humanity, life in its fullness for one person, for one community of people, is to deny oneself of our own humanity and fullness of life. Just as Jesus sent out his followers then, so too are we sent out. We are sent in the authority and power of God to proclaim the nearness of the kingdom and to bring healing. Unlike the followers then, this sending is something which confronts and challenges us. Going to the lost places means that we need to take injustice personally. We need to be vulnerable enough to sit in the most uncomfortable place of hearing how we are part of the structures and systems that create and bind our society. For many of us, this begins with recognising our own default privileges which can then lead us to deepen the connections with our communities. We can then lament together and then be change together. As a follower of Jesus living out the desire for God's kingdom to be near, we can then together be an authoritative voice, prophetic in action, seeking change and justice. Jesus sharing his authority, mission and healing with his followers means that we must play our part in healing the world. And this leads me to end with two questions for us to think about. First, is the kind of church Jesus is creating in Matthew the kind of church we know today? Or have we created comfortable, world-conforming churches instead of being authoritative, prophetic, justice-seeking, healing body of Christ? A church that proclaims and lives out the nearness of the kingdom of heaven. My second question, where are the lost places in our local communities? Where are the lost places in our society? The places that God is sending us out to proclaim the gospel and bring healing. The Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. 
Amen. Let us declare our faith in God, the Holy Trinity. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. In our prayers, when we say, Lord, in your mercy, you are invited to say, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for your church, for all the people gathering to worship this morning in new ways. Bless all that is offered in your name, so that we may know you and love you more deeply. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. Loving God, we pray for the reopening of churches for individual worship, for the comfort this will bring. We give thanks to Canon Peter, Reverend Gail, and for all who minister on our behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all who... We pray for all who make important decisions, for all who are guiding our country at this time. Pour out your peace on all who are worried and frightened. Help them to know that you are with them always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving God, may we continue to pray for the Black Lives Matter movement, all those courageously seeking equality. Pour out your loving presence to those who have lost loved ones. Help them heal and continue in their hope for a better future. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we pray for our community, for good neighbours and networks of support. We pray for our family and our friends, for technologies that have allowed us to communicate with our loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Loving God, pray for our schools, the children who have returned to an unfamiliar classroom. We give thanks to teachers who are working hard to make the school a safe and happy place for our children. Pour out your love for the children who are not returning to school this academic year, who are missing their friends dearly. Pray for parents who may find home learning a challenge. May they feel your peace in the coming weeks and months. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all who are sick, for those who are still awaiting treatment, for all who are affected by this virus. Pour out your loving presence upon them. Bring peace and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Noah's written a prayer for us now. Loving God, we so, so, so thank 999, the NHS. They have done a great job. Key workers, teachers, we thank for what they are doing right now. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Merciful God, accept these prayers prayers for the the sake sake of of your your Son, our our Saviour, Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. The Collect for the first Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A prayer for all those affected by coronavirus. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. 
in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Before our final hymn, I'd just like to say a personal thank you to everyone who's uh, sent me messages of uh, congratulations on my new role. And um, I've uh, been very touched by all those messages of, of support and thanks. I would also like to say um, a thank you uh, on behalf of Bourneville Parish Church to all of you who are supporting the church, uh, not just by your prayers, and but by your financial giving. Thank you to everyone who gives by the parish giving scheme or standing order or by online donations. It's making a huge difference to us as a church uh, that those gifts are still coming into us even through this very challenging time. If you would like to make a donation towards the mission and ministry of Bourneville Parish Church, um, by an online donation, then you can use the link that either went out with the email message from me um, today or um, that you will find in the description that goes with this video, either on YouTube or on Facebook. Or you can scan the QR code that will appear at the end of this service. Um, just scan it with the camera on your mobile phone and it should take you uh, to a secure website for making an online donation. But thank you for all those gifts. It's making a huge difference to our work. Now let's sing our final hymn, Will You Come and Follow Me If I But Call Your Name? Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare? Should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the you and hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around? Through my sight and touch to sound in you and you in me. Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. As we come to the end of this service, let us pray for God's blessing on us all. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And we say together the words of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.